If you require assistance, please speak to a member of staff, and in the event of an emergency, please follow the directions of the students. We ask that you always keep your personal belongings with you, and the use of photography and filming is not allowed. Digital programs can be found at lso.co.uk forward slash programs. Please turn any notifications to silent. Thank you, and enjoy the concert. and welcome to this special relaxed concert. Today we have three amazing musicians with us. So we've got Sarah on violin. Let's give her a welcome. We've got La hiding over there cello. We'll see her later. And we've got Sophia on the piano. You can see that today's concert is being signed for us by the amazing Angie Newman. You can also download, if you're watching us online, you can download our program notes by just clicking on the link, and there's live captioning that you can access by pressing the CC button. So if you want to know all about the music, download those program notes, because there's an opportunity later for you to ask us questions. You can ask us questions in the hall and also by typing them in online. So let's begin with our first piece, which is for violin and piano. And it's by Samuel Coleridge Taylor. He was an English composer who lived in Victorian times, so about 120 years ago. He was incredibly famous. He wrote a piece that the world loved. And it meant that he got to travel around the world with this one or two pieces. He was so famous that he got to meet the president. But he wasn't very good with the money side of things and the business side of things. And when he died young, aged just 37, he was almost penniless, which is really sad. However, one of the last things he said was, I have had a happy life, I am a happy man. 
So not all bad. And his two children both went on to be famous musicians, one a composer, one a violinist. This is one of his African dances from 1904. He wrote it for his friend, who was a brilliant violinist. So it's a real chance for Sarah to show off. I hope you enjoy it.
is for solo cello, so welcome, La. This piece is by another hugely famous composer, Rachmaninoff. Now, Rachmaninoff was really famous for writing huge, emotional, deeply felt, melancholic music. But he was also regarded as one of the all-time greatest pianists ever. And because he was such a great piano player, his diary was filled up with playing engagements. He was constantly playing concerts. And therefore, he was sad because he didn't have time to devote to his composing. And often, he wasn't in his beloved homeland of Russia, and that made him sad too. And that's why a lot of his music is sad. This piece is called Vocal Ease, and it's like a song without words. And it's a chance for you all to close your eyes and just let yourself drift off. It's really, really beautiful.
Oh, how gorgeous was that? I hope some of you closed your eyes and just let yourself drift off. Uh, next piece is for all three musicians, and so it's called simply Trio. Three. And it's by Clara Schumann. So Clara Schumann is another unbelievably famous composer now. She's had about a hundred years a little bit in the wilderness. But when she was alive in the 1800s, she was a hugely famous pianist, just like Rachmaninoff, but a hundred years earlier. And she had a really, really busy schedule touring all across Europe. So when she did have time to write music, which was very little amounts of time, because she was also married to an incredibly famous composer, and she had four children. When she did find time, she often wrote music for herself to play, and that's what this piece is. She wrote this when she was on holiday one summer, and so she had all the time in the world to devote to it, with nothing else to do. And we're going to hear the third movement now, and the fourth movement a little later on. The third movement is a bit like a lilting waltz, and it's a little bit sad, because her husband, Robert Schumann, very famous composer, was a little bit sick as she was writing it, and she was a little bit worried about him. But put that aside, and what you've got is a beautiful waltz. So this is the third movement of Clara Schumann's Piano Trio. Thank you. 
Gosh, today is filled with such gorgeous music, isn't it? Uh, We'll return to Clara in a short while, but now is the chance for you to ask us questions. So if you're in the hall and you have a question and you're down here, wait for the big mic. If you're up there, Bannockburn, hello. Hello, one of my favourite schools. Um, You'll have to shout. And also we've got some questions on the screen. So whilst you get your heads together, let's read one from the screen. From our friend from Chennai, Yashbi, who asks, what kind of violin is Sarah playing? You need the microphone. Have you got the microphone? Yeah. And how long has Laura been playing the cello? So, my violin is a very old violin, um, and it's Italian, um, and it's called a Galliano, and I'm very lucky because it doesn't belong to me. Um, It's lent to me um, by somebody whose stepfather was in the LSO a very long time ago in the 1930s, and she has very generously allowed me to play it in the orchestra. So that's my violin. It's Italian, and it's about 250 years old. Wow. And, La, how long have you been playing the cello? So I've started when I was seven or eight, and I'm now 31. So I'll let you do the math. I'm not Bannock too sure Burn how long that is. Let's ask the Bannockburn kids, yeah. how many years is that? <laughs> did, you, did they get it? Yeah, 24. There you go. That's many years. Very good. Whatever. Okay. Does anybody in the hall have a question for us? Oh, there's a hand that's gone up there in the very nice checked jumper. Just wait for the microphone. Okay. There you go. It'll work like magic. (laughs) I was wondering, how long have you been playing the piano? Oh, thank you for asking Sophia a question. How long have you been playing the piano, Sophia? Well, I'm not going to tell you how old I am, so... (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> but I've been playing since I was about seven years old. Very Great question. Okay, so I'm seeing hands going up from Bannockburn. I don't know if we can get more light on the balcony. Can't really see them, but I'm going to go with the person that was waving so beautifully. Yes, you. How is the violin not damaged if it's been through World War II? Great question. And I have never been asked that ever before. So that's, I mean, what is amazing about these instruments is, is if they could speak, I think they would have some amazing stories to tell us. I, I don't know where this violin has been. It may, I mean, with me, it's been all the way around the world and back because it's come with me all over the world with the orchestra when we go and, and tour and do concerts. But I would have thought it's history if it could speak or write it down, would be really, really interesting and exciting. So I think that's an amazing question. It's an amazing question. It It does have a hard box that it goes in, doesn't it? It does, yes. It's got a very sturdy case that I carry it around in. So hopefully hopefully I'm looking after it. Wow, great question. Uh, Let's look at the screen. Oh, we, We have from Hannes from Germany. What made you pick this repertoire, Sarah? What made us pick this repertoire? Yeah. Well, isn't the answer to that Rebecca over there? Re- yes, the answer <laughs> to that is Rebecca. Um, I suppose what we decided was instead of playing a piece with three of us all together, we thought it would be really nice to have one piece with violin and one piece with cello. And really, what we decided was not to have everything that sounded the same. And I think the Rachmaninoff is a beautiful lyrical, melancholic piece, and the Coleridge Taylor was very dancey. And then, obviously, Clara Schumann's um, slow movement was very beautiful, and we've got another one still to go, so you have to tell me if you think it works. There we go. Uh, anybody in the hall? I'm seeing more Bannockburn hands. Okay, you there in the middle. What inspired them to play their instruments? Yeah, Sophia, what inspired you to play the piano? Do you know, my parents, when I was small, my parents knew somebody that was throwing out a piano. (gasps) And they said to my mum and dad, you can have this piano for five pounds. Do you want it? And my parents said, oh, well, okay, maybe our children would like to play. And they had four children, my parents, and three of us are professional musicians as a result of that five pounds. So well spent, mum and dad. Well spent. Sarah, what inspired you to play the violin? 
Well, I, st I started playing the piano. That was the first instrument I had a go at, and I was terrible at it. I found it really difficult, and I, I got a little bit downhearted. And then my older sister was playing the violin, and I think it was just that thing of a younger sister wanting to do what the older one was doing. So I started having violin lessons, and I just loved it and enjoyed it, and that was that, was that really. And what about you, Laura? Well, I started with the piano as well. And um, we had to pick an instrument, me and my sister, at the same time. And she picked the harp, which is quite a big instrument. So I wanted to play the, du the double bass, but my parents were not too keen to have a harp <laughs> and a double bass. So they made me play the cello, and I'm quite happy now. I bet you're glad you didn't pick yeah. the double bass. Exactly. Double basses are like this big before you even start. So I bet you're glad you don't have to lug that everywhere. Uh, there's nothing more on the screen, so let's, can, will you indulge me? Can we have one more question from Bannockburn? Because they are such a great supporters of Discovery. All right, on the end, you're getting pointed at by your friend. How, how, did, you get... how did you get into the orchestra? Oh, that's a secret. <laughs> let's ask the longest serving member that we've got here today, which is Sarah, which makes me feel old because I've been around as long as Sarah. Um, how did you get into the orchestra, Sarah? I'll make it sound really brief, hopefully. Um, well, I always loved playing in orchestras. So from when I was in school, um, youth orchestras, all the local groups, all that sort of stuff. So I always really, really wanted to be in an orchestra. And to get into an orchestra, unfortunately, you do have to do an audition. You have to pass an audition. So um, you do your audition, and hopefully it goes really well. And then in this country, we do what's called a trial period, where you go in, you see if you work in the orchestra, if the orchestra works with you, if it's... Um, a good relationship, and hopefully, fingers crossed, they offer you a job. And that is how it works. Simple. Yeah. <laughs> Simple. Easy. Easy peasy. I think we should give Sarah a clap for that wonderful explanation. So, our next relaxed concert is in May, and more details about that will be released really soon. So keep an eye out on our website and Twitter and all of that sort of stuff. Before I introduce the last piece, can we say a huge thank you to our amazing musicians today? And a huge thank you to Angie for signing the concert for us. And of course, there is an enormous team in the hall and downstairs and all around the building. Let's give them a clap too, because they can hear us. So, we finish with the final movement of Clara's trio. Interesting fact about this piece. Clara wrote this piece. It was really famous. Everybody loved it. A year later, her husband, Robert Schumann, wrote a trio that was very similar intriguing and he was way more famous than she was so his trio became a lot more famous a lot quicker than hers because of course she had committed the crime of being a girl who composed at a time when you know girls weren't allowed to compose anyway this final movement is dramatic and twisty and spiky and Clara wrote it for herself so guess who gets all the most exciting bits of music the pianist, Sophia. So it's a chance for Sophia finally to show off. I hope you enjoy this, and I'll see you all again really soon.
in the hall. Please follow the instructions of the students. Please ensure that you take all your personal